Hello and welcome again to another B2B R&D Blab. It is Friday afternoon at noon Eastern time. We are here on Blab every Friday at noon and I welcome you here today. I am Ellen Williams, CEO and co-founder of B2B R&D, always joined by... Craig Yaris, the COO and co-founder of B2B R&D, home of yep. research. There we go. Uh, and the premise of B2B R&D is to help all digital marketers and digital marketers of all kinds to um, basically maintain their knowledge. And not just in an educational kind of way, but more of a research kind of way. And so we've called the product research. So we know that you guys get lots of emails because we get the same emails and we know you read as many of them as you possibly can. Um, the interesting thing is we read all of them and we put succinct summaries into a database for you. So after you've read those emails you subscribe to and three or four weeks down the line, you remember some great piece of information, but it's really not going to be easy to find it in your inbox. You can come over to research and log in as the screen shows above and simply choose a category or choose a keyword or a date range or lots of different ways in which you can search it. And lo and behold, we've got the information you're looking for without you having to drag yourself through your inbox or go to uh, Google or Bing or a larger search engine. Because when there are things you wanna know, you search. But when there are things you need to know, you research. So today we are talking about content marketing um, and every week we talk about digital marketing strategies and we try to take on some different topics and with content marketing it's a very broad topic so we'll be chatting about right we'll be chatting about blogging and and articles and how they differ and maybe some content on social media um, and how to pull that all together in a sort of a cohesive way because um, I think the f I, I think the first rule of content marketing is planning. What do you think? I, I can't disagree, um, although certainly wouldn't mind disagreeing. But I, I definitely agree that you need to have a plan uh, regarding who you're talking to, what you're saying, and where you're going to say it. I, I think we've been hearing a long for many years. Uh, I'm going back probably 2013 maybe. The content is king uh, expression. And unfortunately, I think everybody jumped on that bandwagon and said, hey, let's just put out content. Doesn't matter good, bad, or indifferent. Doesn't matter what it says. Let's just get it out there. And they lost sight of that plan, the purpose. And so I, I completely agree. Yeah. And I'm amazed at the number of websites you go to that the content is just, you could tell it's just there to be there. Right. Right. And, so good old SEO, right? Yeah. So before we continue, I'm actually going to close the research window and we can return to that later in the blab. Let's see what happens. Whoa. And there we go, back to the normal conversation. So, so, so I agree, you know, um, content started as the professionals, right? The journalists mm -hmm. went from writing for print to writing for the web. And that was, an, um, I was gonna say it was a natural transition. It, was, it wasn't necessarily natural for them, but it was a logical one that the people who had been writing all these years for print would be the people writing for, you know, the websites and then blogging appeared and then social media appeared and everyone had a tool and everyone had a voice mm -hmm. and I still think there's power in that and I think there's value in that but you're absolutely right content then just became for the sake of content right um, and even even with a plan even though that's the first step you can still not necessarily hit the mark if you're not doing as you said the where the why the who the how you know really understanding um, the two sides of the coin, right? The who's writing it. So whether you're an individual or an entity and the purpose of which you're writing it, but also who's reading it and how it's going to resonate with them. 
I, I agree. And you and I had gone through this very discussion um, just about a year ago. Who were we talking to? And I think that's one of the biggest places to start, the most important places. Who are you talking to? It is part of a plan. But I don't think if you, I think if you don't know who you're talking to and how they communicate, you can't even start to come up with content um, because you'll just be throwing stuff out there. Right, right. Uh, so is so I'm going to skip past that, although I understand its value. Uh, and if we have time, we'll come back and maybe do, you know, the steps to getting to that. Um, but I'd like to sort of dive into content itself. Okay. And the and the various places and and what, you know, what is content marketing? Is it um, me telling you all about me and my organization? Is it um, surveys and polls? Is it trying to get more from you? Is it having other people come along and, and do the writing on my behalf or blogging, guest blogging or influencer? I mean, where where does content marketing fit in the scheme of the various uh, different types of digital marketing that you could talk about? Um, you, you started with what is content marketing just a second ago, and you, you gave a list of different types of text of writing and asked whether those, you know, which of those sort of is content marketing. And my answer is yes. Okay. They're all content marketing. Content marketing really, its goal, and I, I'm, you know, I love Google. Um, its goal really, and I like this, is the objective of driving profitable customer action. So anything that you do that can- So that's marketing but it's content marketing. So content has got to fill the role of that, you know, it, it's. So what marketing isn't content marketing? I think there's very little marketing that isn't content marketing today. We're on Blab right now, that's content marketing. We're going to pull out parts of it and we're going to use it on our Blab as our video Blabs. Uh, it's content marketing. If you conduct a survey on Twitter that drives, you know, the survey is hosted on your site, let's say, that's content driving traffic. So in my mind, everything. See, I don't think that's content. I don't think really? a survey or a poll on a website is considered content. Um, and, and so okay. maybe we do disagree. You said that you didn't want to agree with me. <laughs> well, it's okay. You know, and I definitely um, see what you're saying in regards to surveys and polls. Um, I, but I do, say, I do see how it can be seen as content. But I don't think, I, I wouldn't, I don't know that I would call that content marketing. You know what I'm, I mean, we have, there's uh, lots of different types of content. Yes. Right? Um, not all content is marketing, but is all marketing content? I think so. I do think so. Um, what, you know, off the top of our heads, what, what marketing isn't content? Very true. Blabs are their video, their, their marketing, because we started this blab with a, a, a drop in or a, a screen share of our research search engine. That's marketing. Um, we'll probably talk about research once or twice more. It's, so this whole thing is really marketing. We're marketing us as the experts in marketing. When you read a blog, it's content. Now, it could be a blog that talks about programmatic advertising, let's say, and never once mention the company or the purpose, but we're still bringing people to our website. So we sure. are marketing because at the bottom of that blog, blab blog is the, hey, why not check out this, which is right. within our website. No, I, I absolutely agree. Uh, I absolutely agree that that kind of content is marketing. Uh, and so. Podcasts, they're marketing. Yeah. Um, email. It's content, sure. yeah, but it's marketing. So all marketing is content. I think so. 
but not all content is actually marketing because content can be other things. Yes. Very interesting. Yes. I never, I guess, you know, everyone talks about content marketing and content is king. Um, and, and I think, I think the definition you read is broad. I think oh, if you asked other I, people about, no, but I think if you asked other people about content marketing, they would talk specifically about, you know, generating content in, in bigger chunks, but even, you know, social media posts can be considered they are. content, right? They are. they are, but that, so now we need the degree of content, right? And we need the, the, is it a um, informative content? Is it marketing content? Is it short? Is it long? Is it posts? And that all becomes part of the plan. And that all becomes back right. to what we were saying, who, where, how, why, all exactly. of that, you know, that I can write a, I can write a 2000 word blog post, yep. but um, I sh can also write a 200 word blog post and I can write a, 140 character, you know, tweet, and they all sort of fall in line into the overall content marketing plan. You're Before we go any right. further, uh -oh. I'd like to welcome Melanie. We haven't seen, I was thinking about you this morning. Melanie, and, uh, I was too, uh, that we haven't seen her in so haven't long. seen her in a while. So, uh, so hopefully it's a good hair day and she'll jump on. <laughs> <laughs> um, but uh, to, to continue the conversation, and, and hopefully she will jump on, um, content, you know, good. So, so let's talk. Okay, so all marketing is content. Let's try to narrow that down to what makes a good uh, content marketing plan. Well, I, I right. So what's, what's a good plan and, and what's good content? Okay, yeah, those are uh, so my favorite question, my favorite answer you're coming back with, right? It depends. Um yeah. But you know, here I was as you were talking, I was I was trying to to check something here. One of my, you know, somebody who's been around a long time in the the content content marketing marketing digital marketing world is Seth Godin. And I subscribe, subscribe to his blog, I, you know, so I get his content frequently. And a lot, a lot of his content. I just checked the word count on one, um, on April 28th. Is that today, yesterday? Yesterday. It's, it's all of 81 words. That 81 was- 81 words. 81 words. But yet, it's, it was powerful. It's, so, it, and- Okay. What made it powerful? Um, that's a good question. What made it powerful? It resonated with me. Perfect that's, answer. Yeah. That's, it was that's the perfect answer. Yeah, it was powerful to me. I'm not, you know, this one spoke to me. Um, for no other so reason, it was, it, it it was the right, the right it, He reached the right person with the right message, the right time. what you wanted yeah. to hear. Um, Here. So, so, yeah, it doesn't, so, right. It's, but... Again, so we're talking about content marketing, you know, it, it, all sizes because there are platforms and there's opportunity for being powerful and motivational and inspirational in a few sentences or really bringing to life a story that can be powerful and motivational that requires, you know, more content and more more time reading, more time yep. writing. Yep. There is, it's, it really is a lot of times a function of right place, right time, uh, right message. Uh, and, and that's a tough thing to, to find. Um, I, I subscribe to an email newsletter uh, from Chris Brogan. Now, I've been a big fan of Chris Brogan's for a long time. He's a nice guy. Um, and he really, he exudes, um, caring, if that makes sense. Anytime I've met him, anytime I've talked to him, and he sent an email. It's a got, great quality. It, it, it's every Sunday he sends his email out. And one other time I've actually, and he always says, you know, I'm drinking this. Re hit reply and tell me what you're drinking. Uh, this week, his message was really spot on. It was like something I needed to hear that day. And so I replied, nothing to do with what I was drinking. Um, but I sort of began a conversation that lasted, I think, four emails back and forth. And it was a, it was a great, now I don't know who responds 
to his mm. marketing content because it was marketing content. Right. In the end, he was selling something, um, but it was just right place, right time. And you never, sometimes you never know. So it's the, <laughs> I think quality content will resonate. Um, it, it just, and, and Melanie said on the side that, you know, Chris is a fantastic guy. He's, you know, it's generous and he is generous with his time. I agree. But I think the quality content will resonate. And I think over the last two years, I've seen the quality of content go down on major companies. And I think it was, it's just a function of be there everywhere. Yeah. I think it's a function of be there. I think it's a function of just uh, a lot of noise trying to be above below through part of you you need to be there right so it's back to the same thing uh, but the quality of content i think is is due for a 180. it is there's there's definitely a movement to having more quality and quality is very subjective also oh, yeah. it needs to fit into the plan itself the why i'm writing this who i'm reaching what resonates, you know, quality to you and quality to me? And is it, you know, is quality perfect English or is quality um, great information early on? Is quality the long drawn out, you know, I can picture it or is it just get to the to the point? I was reading a, a piece online. I, I it was it didn't look like a blog post. It seemed to me blog posts aren't really long. This felt like an article. Mm -hmm. I, I don't know if I can really define the two of them or maybe they are the same. And it said, you know, the the five ways to do this. And I was like, cool. So I started reading it and started skimming it. And they went on and on and on about why they were writing about the topic and why it was such a big, important topic. And I was halfway down the screen before I got to the bullet points of the five ways. Now, to me, that just seemed like overdone, fluffed, word SEO. count, unnecessary, um, get to the point. All right, give me a paragraph or two intro. I can live with that, but get to the point. And to me, so to me, that's that's more quality to others, someone else, just understanding who they were and why they found these five things so important and the whole long backstory, maybe that made it more effective, but it, it didn't to me. But here's the, it, okay, and that's a, that's a great point. Were you their audience? And if you were, then- Yes, it was not, definitely a topic of interest to me. Then they're not hitting the mark in my mind because right. if you don't, I mean, we're not so much different than, you know, if you, if it was interest to you, you're their target market and they've missed the mark. So they're putting out content for the sake of content. They've written a really long article because somewhere they saw that Google likes really long articles. They missed the similar well, study you know, that said Google likes shorter articles. Yeah, right. Well, and I'll say maybe, maybe not, because okay. I'm going to bring this down to simplicity, right? Uh, but I'll bring it down to something that I can relate to potentially more than you can. Um, I go clothes shopping, right? So I go clothes and women's clothes maybe. departments are always, no, but women, but men don't tend to, to shop as much. And women's departments are seem to be always larger uh, than men's departments. Mm -hmm. So when I go clothes shopping, um, you know, I can go to a woman's store and walk through the whole store and not find anything that I like. Mm -hmm. It's not my taste. Yet I can go to the store next to it and, you know, find three or five things that I'd be willing to purchase. So I'm, you know, I'm still a woman shopping for clothes. That first store didn't do anything wrong. But they, you know, did. they didn't hit the, miss the mark. They did miss the mark. They weren't having, they don't have clothes that you like. Now, I am actually going to admit this on recording, but I don't mind <laughs> shopping. I go with my wife, I'll go myself, you know, whatever. It doesn't, I don't mind. Um, I enjoy it, it's time spent with people. And if Kim, my wife, I know her, I know her style. So if she goes into a store that is catering to a younger crowd, She's not going to find anything. The store misses the mark. It's not for her. 
if she goes into a store but like, the store doesn't miss the mark the store is marketing what it's marketing yes to different it's a different audience right they're, so they're not missing the mark if they're she's just not she's not the, the audience. right audience right. right right and so the same with content the difference is when you put it out there you need to know who you want to talk to and if you're the person they're talking to the person they want to if you're there i'm going to jump back to the buyer persona if you're that person and you're reading an article thinking this is garbage this is fluff they've missed the mark they've lost the opportunity to market to you almost um and I agree with Melanie, the backstory or why they're writing the article should be an extra. It's at the end of the article. Give me. Right. You know what? There you go. If they had restructured the article, then I would have gotten what I wanted up front. Right. And if I was so inclined to read more, then I could have. It right. felt like uh, if it, it wasn't a bait and switch. That's, because that was they the did... phrase in my head. The, right. And that mine too, it wasn't a bait and switch because they delivered on their headline. I got those bullet points, but it was, you know, it, it, it's like when you go to the casino and you have to walk through the casino to register for the hotel or yeah. to get to the restaurant, yeah. or the, there's a restaurant there, but you got to go through the casino right. first. That's what it felt like. I, I could get to the content I was looking for, but I had to go through what, what they wanted me to see first. Now, I, I want to ask you, how did that make you feel? This is now a counseling session. How did it make <laughs> you feel that you had to spend time going through this fluff, this useless information? Uh, I was annoyed. Okay. I was annoyed, right. you know, and then I, and then, you know, and then I wasn't all that impressed with their five bullet points, um, no, it but, it may, but it may have been because that wasn't the first time I was reading on that topic. So I have to give them, you know, okay, if I had if I had never read the topic before, those po points would have been more valid for me. Okay. But still, you were annoyed when you got to the points. So yeah. even if they had... Yeah, maybe I came with a little bit of a, I don't care what they say. Right. <laughs> They've already annoyed me. <laughs> I, I, and, you know, I think we, we sort of look past that, but that's a major problem with content today. And I let's separate out the marketing part of it just the content years ago when i would present i would talk to people about you know a good source of content is these listicles as they call them i hate that term um but you know the five ways to the three ways. i have to tell you today it's probably one of the worst things you can do we've got listicle fatigue um I, I yeah, really, I, uh, maybe because I, I haven't been reading them for years. Okay. Now they sort of, they stand out from the crowd a little bit for me when I just want quick info. Oh, good. I'm going to get bullet points. I'm going to get a list. But here I don't not. I, well, I got them eventually. I just it, had to look, a, you know, I had to scroll a little further. To me, those those types of things actually do the complete opposite to me. They completely turn me off nowadays. I want a little bit more. I want something that I can walk away from an article. I'm willing to spend the time, but if I walk away, I need to walk away with something. So, so most articles are going to give you, if they're educating you, they're, e they're either making one point or they're going to make several points right. on a topic. So they may not bullet point them, but they're going to put them in paragraph sure. form. So you'd rather read that kind of comprehensive article type information and glean from it the points you find important rather than read something where someone else has bulleted or highlighted. It's like getting that textbook with the yellow highlights in it already. Yes. That's why I, listen, I always bought new textbooks for that reason. I didn't want to be swayed by what somebody else thinks. So yes, now you, you bring that up. Maybe that's just it. I want to look at this stuff from my eyes. I don't want you, the author, to tell me what you think is important. It's that's good, um, but really, it's. I think it's individual, individualized, individuality. That you know, it's it's what I take away from it. I may not see what you see, and I think that's okay. Um, 
And it's one of the things that, you know, if you actually think about the summary content that we write for research, we don't usually pull out the five things you need to know. No, we're giving you a quick summary to the content, but we're leaving you the link to the content to make your own opinions. Right. Um, and I think lots of people are using these BuzzFeed style headlines. I call them clickbait. I am so, I'm really getting, <laughs> it, it's sort of becoming a, a pet peeve of mine. Uh, I, I, one of the things we had read, was it this week or last week, was using emojis in subject lines get e gets email opened. Or doesn't. Or doesn't. <laughs> there, were, the, there was there reports was. going both both sides but, on that. I, I was, you know, talking strictly about the one that said it gets it open. To me, you put an emoji in the email in the subject line, you know, it's delete because you've just, I'm not, I don't talk in emojis. And maybe that's because I'm old. You are not the target market, no. I guess, for those. Maybe, you know, like I say, maybe it's because I'm old. You know, I use them occasionally, but I am certainly not somebody who's using them often. Although I did in an email to you when we talked about the morning sip and emojis. Yes, uh, you know, and I tend to use emojis in text messages, mm -hmm. but not marketing text, personal text. Right. Um, but I have, I, I, ha I will admit that there are sometimes when you send an email, um, there, there have been times where I've gone for the happy face, and then realized that this is a professional email, probably <laughs> shouldn't have, it, and I've deleted it. But it goes back. That goes back decades for when I started using email and it was very hard to bring tone into an email. Mm -hmm. It's very black and white and it's very subjective of the person reading it on the other side. No matter, no matter how much you write, it's, you know, it's still subjective to the person reading it. And if you throw sarcasm in, how do they know it's sarcasm? And so, um, you know, you can you can say something, you can be typing it and thinking it's funny or, or be in a great mood. And then you, if you read it again, you realize, well, this can be interpreted in so many different ways. So I, I, I would put that happy face and then realize this is such an inappropriate thing to put in the middle of this email. And I would uh, rephrase the email to make sure it came off as, you know, maybe I don't have to be so you know, sarcastic or clever, how about I just come out and say it very bluntly so that it's it's read. And so so that, you know, one of the things we also uncovered about emojis was that they are misinterpreted in some in yes. some cases. Not and, and it's not that you didn't pick the right emoji for the emotion you wanted to to send, but that some of the actual emoji images aren't hitting the mark. Well, they're not hitting the mark uh, for several reasons. One, interpretation. Two, Outlook and the iPhone and Android and you know all of these other email providers render emojis differently. Right. So, so some of them just yeah. weren't. So that's the point. So some of them weren't as clear. So I chose happy face, but the happy face on your device just is a weird looking happy face and you're like what is it you and know actually when you send it from outlook i think or maybe it's from your phone and you use a happy face it's just on my iphone it's a j correct yes I'm like, yes i get the j's also and every time so, i have to learn that's an emoji now i never learn it and that's you know i mean what's a j yep hey yep. i've just done this j who's j <laughs> <laughs> Finally done, Jay. <laughs> so all of a sudden, we're in black. you know, you're not supposed <laughs> to be putting that stuff out there. <laughs> we said the same thing at the same time. It's just too weird. Um, but yeah, so and, and so are emojis part of content marketing? I, I think they are. I think um, they are. They, yeah. And today, more than ever, especially as we move towards the era of, or we're in the era of Snapchat where you can use these filters with smiley faces and whatnot. And that's all part of content. Facebook too, yes. Yes, Facebook too now, absolutely. Um, Instagram, all of that. So, so content, so we, we talked about content earlier, a list of all different, you know, blogs, social media, and you said even, you know, blabs, yeah. videos, podcasts, 
images. Images, yeah. Just images, emojis, that. you know, all of that is, is content. Yes. And um, it, not only is it content, but images, videos, they're some of the most liked, shared, talked about content there is. So as our attention, and here's part of the problem too, is I think our attention spans are getting shorter and shorter and shorter. And it has nothing to do with sort of um, a lack of being able to pay attention. It's just there's so much coming at us. And we well, have a split second to make a decision as to whether it's worthwhile. Right. So, and, and your comments are relating back to the fact that you, we just, you know, uh, identified images as content, but also our images, is it easier to understand with an image than it is with? text like i just said you know things can be misinterpreted even though emojis are, are you know we, we've uncovered some of those are misinterpreted but images you know offer that visual yes. that may be able to just get the point across better than you can with your bullet points or your 80 words or 2000 words that's very interesting i've never seen any research that says images are misinterpreted or any research that sort of indicates you know, images are causing issues. I don't know, not that they're causing issues, but if you were to go to an art museum, you know, what you take away from is, the yes, art it, it is, is, you know, that's definitely right. Everyone's interpreting. So there's, you're going to interpret somebody's image, you know, when someone posts an image, what captures your attention from that image? You know, and, and that's one of the sort of cardinal rules for blogging these days. They all start with that image. Yes. You know, that's supposed to bring forward the, the crux of, of the content, right? Yes. Um, and, and that goes back, you know, years ago, again, people would just use images because we were told images are important. Um, and I've never been a fan of using images for images sake. It, it doesn't do anything, but if the image can convey your meaning clearly, concisely, I certainly think it's worthwhile. Absolutely. What's very popular now are these images of nothingness and these quotes. Um, I, I actually, I have wanted for so long to do sort of an experiment with these images as content and start making up quotes and attributing them to famous people. Um, <laughs> I, I have, and just start sharing these on Twitter and Instagram and Facebook and see what kind of reactions they get. And I haven't done it because- Isn't that libel or yeah, something well, like that? <laughs> the people are dead. I'm thinking dead people. Like- Oh, there's gotta be an estate somewhere if you're quoting them. Yeah, I, that's true. Um, <laughs> you know, but but, would people really believe that, you know, Abraham Lincoln said, you know, let the internet be free? <laughs> I don't think so. So I think I'm good. All right. There you go. But I, I have thought about it because this kind of content spurs emotion and action. So what if the content is meaningless? Well, well it's, spur twofold. Con it's, it's twofold, right? They're taking, so content that integrates text and images in a single image as opposed to an image associated with a blog it's you know you kill two birds with one stone you've got the imagery and you've mm -hmm. got of a, a simplistic it has to be simplistic otherwise right. it wouldn't fit on the image um something easy to read and maybe even visually more e easy to read than the black text that is on the white background on every social media platform and they all blur into each other and pop here's this nice colorful image with 10 words i can read 10 words you know <laughs> before i keep moving on right because we're talking about um time and and people's attention span right. and i think you know that that really does give two opportunities to make your point if you find the right imagery, you know, putting 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 a motivational quote on a, on a photo of a, a sunset or a stream is is the a, the mood or the emotion you want to evoke, 
Um, but if you're going to use it for business, I think getting the appropriate image behind it is 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 going to be important. I agree. And, and Melanie said on the side there that a lot of images are uh, lazy in effort. And I would agree with you, which goes back to the whole premise that content marketing quality has just nosedived, nose dived, nose dove, performed a nose dive. In, there you go. Yeah. Uh, and it, it includes the the images. We are we're in a situation where people are just trying to churn out content. Um, I'm actually reading a book, and it's a 50 year old's uh, experiences at a startup. I'm not going to get into which startup because it does not paint a pretty picture. Um, and their goal was to churn out content as lowbrow as you can do with the goal of just getting people to read it. Uh, the highbrow content that they started to do got a lot more um, views, a lot more you know, shares, but didn't convert the same. So they cut it or you know, limited its... Right. So because good, the ROI wasn't there on the higher the higher end content. No, the quick I I would argue it's the immediate ROI wasn't there. Okay. See, I think good content marketing it's not going to convert first time. It's building trust. It's building a relationship. And unfortunately, I think we're a society that wants instant gratification and companies want instant gratification. Read my article, download my thing, buy my product, period. But it's not like that. I think good content marketing is a relationship. But yes, but you just said the opposite, that their results were that the, the content that was making the difference with the conversion was not necessarily the long, you know, quality yeah, it, content. It's true. But again, depending on the market and the promises they're making, they're, you know, I, I'm t I'll tell you about this book offline. It's really eye opening. Um, there were no statistics that the long, I'll call it the better content wasn't converting. It was just that the garbage content would convert quicker or quickly. Now, their conversion was not necessarily a purchase when they were looking at this. What they were looking at as a conversion was the download of an, of an item and then they can put that person so over to the sales team. So, so an action yes. was taken, not yes. necessarily a conversion. Yes. Well, they were considering an action as a conversion. Okay. So it, it wasn't necessarily a sale. It was just that the garbagey content was driving more action than the better content. But I, I would actually argue the better content would probably make for a better conversion if but if it's not driving action, then how do they get to conversion? Um, how do you know who's reading it if you don't get someone reading the longer content to take an action? Well, here's the thing. They're, they have a software set up that they know, you know, based upon cookies, that they can actually identify the people reading the content. So they could if they wanted. Only if they know who they are the first time, right? Yes. I mean, or the third time, or there has to be That's at true. some point that person identified themselves. No, you're right. You're absolutely yep. right. So yeah, if which means there was an action taken. Right. Yes. Um, I just, I don't know. I, I'm, I'm, I'm staunchly in the belief that good content will eventually. It's on its way back already. I, it definitely I, is. People are craving value. If I'm because now. What's happened is, as you said earlier, where we don't have the time, where you know the, we don't have the attention because there is so much being thrown at us. So if we take the time to read something, it better be worth reading. Yeah, so absolutely. you know, so Melanie's comment is smarter folks crave value. I think that has been a standard, yes, but I think now I think it comes down to to time as well. If I'm going to spend my time watching or reading or looking at something, it uh, it it needs Better. to be worth my time. It needs right. to be worth my time. And and when it's not, you know, um, so I I will 
admit I sometimes get sucked into the, you know, what's happened to your 10 favorite celebrities in the last I, 20 years. I do and, too. I admit I get sucked in. Those That content is one per page, right? Because it's all about the advertising on yeah. those pages. And you get there and you have that split second of, do I care enough? You know, is, is this, right. do I really care enough to click through 19 times to see these 19 people? Because um, you either are or aren't going to be enticed by the advertising, right? Advertising has its place. It works. People, you know, get sales through advertising. But if I'm not there for anything going on around the content I was there for in the first place, it's not going to work on me. Right. So I have to decide whether or not I'm going to really spend the time now to go through. So I'm always happier when I wind up on a site that at least gives me five of them. So, okay, I don't have to click on. So now I'm a happier person. And yep. this goes back to Melanie mentioned earlier about mood on the side here. Yep. Um, so now you've, you've delivered at least some of it. I'm not new to the internet. I, you know, if I had gotten all 19, I would have fallen over. I understand I'm going to click again. Um, but if it loads too slow, you've lost me. Yep. Um, but it really needs to deliver. It needs to deliver on the promise and it needs to deliver value. And everything from the most important purchase of my life to the most ridiculous guilty pleasure, right? If it's if I'm not getting what I wanted, then I'm I'm not happy. I'm not interested. I'm not continuing to read. Um, so it, the topic is, is moot. It's all topics need to have decent quality content in order to be more engaging and keep people more, um, to keep people longer on your site and coming back and to create that call to action that people take action where you can start to track how frequently they come back. I, I completely agree. And you said, and it just flew out of my head, unfortunately. Um, I can't remember because you, yeah, had, you let me go on and on on that one. <laughs> I, I didn't want to interrupt you because you know, it's rude to interrupt people. Um, but there, you had said something that really kind of struck a nerve. The, okay. You, you talked about the promise, the promise when the headline says the 10 celebrities that have changed the most and you click through and there's no judgment here. We've all done it. Even Melanie admitted it we're, we're we've all done it. But if you're going to not get what you're promised, you may lose your audience permanently. Exactly. And it goes back to the quality building trust. What, and if your headline says, you know, X, Y, Z, give me X, Y, Z. And, you know, you're Don't example, point. <laughs> and listen, bullet point or not, that's, you know, as long as you fulfill the promise, you know, we're okay. But I think the article that you, you know, we were talking about earlier, they didn't necessarily fulfill their promise. Their promise was five tips X, Y, Z, but you had to wade through obviously more than an intro paragraph to get to it. They didn't fulfill the promise. Oh my gosh. Yes. And when we're reading content, on our mobile devices, our little six inch screens, you're now- I you may know, not have. I was on my computer. Okay. But if I had read that on on Wouldn't my made. phone, I probably, would, I probably would not have made it all the way down. You're absolutely right. And in fact, um, Facebook right now is going to start to look at time spent on articles. And so they're sort of going to begin doing what Google was doing. So we talk about good content coming back. I'm not going to call it a bounce rate per se, but if the headline is a promise and you go to the article on Facebook, whether it be through instant articles or not, and you jump right back, they're looking at that article as not meeting the promise that you've been deceptive. So if you were, if you click through on that article from Facebook, and spent just a few minutes because, you know, there's 17 paragraphs about why this is a good article, and you jumped right back, that article's con quality score uh, will actually, I'm going to use that phrase, will actually be lowered. I'm sure you meant a few seconds, not a few minutes, because if you spent a few seconds. minutes. <laughs> Sorry, I meant a few seconds. Because if uh, you've got someone's attention for a few minutes, no, you're doing a good job. Yeah, you are. I agree. Um, 
But it, yes, you're right. Thank you for pointing that out. So even they're beginning to question the quality of the content being shared on their network. And I can't say if that applies for personal as well as business pages. It can't apply for personal so. because they wouldn't care about yeah. it. Yeah. It's not making them money yet. Yet. Right. Right. And I should be able to share whatever I want. Right. No matter how stupid it as is. Long as, some, as long as no one's reporting it as being inappropriate. Yeah, it can be ridiculous and I agree. dumb. I agree. Maybe that's what my friends like. I mean, now you're talking, you know, when you start yeah. talking Facebook, you're talking, uh, you know, they, they're playing both sides of the coin. You know, yeah. they're playing that personal interaction and um, they're playing the business interaction. That has to be business content. I, I agree. And, and I agree with them doing it. I, I yeah, I, I I do too. I think it's you know it's certainly going to up the game. And you know, I don't want to point fingers, but social media I think has been a big culprit at um, creating this yes lack of quality and content because totally it agree. really did give everyone a voice and everyone a tool. And now you're shareable, even if. You're really not. Yes, I um, completely <laughs> agree. Uh, it, it has really, it, it's really, social media really has changed the quality. I, I agree with you. And if you think about it, on Twitter especially, where you only get 140 characters, so you've got to get that, we'll call it um, sensational headline. You've got to get that click through. I wonder what would happen if Twitter instituted a similar policy that if somebody clicks through a link and jumps right back, they'll start to suppress those links in their new algorithm. That would be, I, that would be put a real damper on a lot of this bad content. Um, I, uh, that's very interesting, but I think, I think Twitter and Facebook are very different in well, those ways. You know, you've got a Facebook page. It's a, it's a location. You know, you can people, although a lot of times they don't return to your Facebook page once they've liked it, cause you're going to wind up in their news feed. So I don't often, if I've liked a Facebook page, I don't necessarily wind up back at that Facebook page. Um, but it can be a place where people go to, and it can be a place where you direct people to yes. from other um, other locations. And you can also direct people to your Twitter, but if, if I'm on someone's website and I click through the Twitter, it's pretty much because I wanna follow them, not because I'm gonna spend time reading Agreed. their Twitter page. If I click through to their Facebook page, I want to see what they're doing on their Facebook Agreed. page before I commit my personal news feed. No, you're com you're absolutely right. You are. So I That's would true. I would I would you know Twitter and Facebook definitely have to. There's some commonality, but they have to behave a little differently. And yes, there the, there's a the new algorithm feed on Twitter, um, which is great. Yes, because it 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 that makes sense because you know Twitter's been around for so long that if you've been on Twitter for a long time, you've got thousands and thousands of followers, and and you're following thousands of people and you may, you know, just because someone I followed three years ago posted today, it may or may not be relevant to me anymore. And I'm not going back that many no, to try to, uh, you know, unfollow someone. It's not worth it. Where I'll unlike or unfriend someone at Facebook. I agree. It's just, it's just a totally different, it's a different consumption I of agree. the content. I'm now going to throw sort of something else in that mix as we talk about you know, quality content. Let's talk LinkedIn just for a second, because I've noticed this, the quality of the things being shared are becoming Facebooky. Um, people are and people are being called out for it, but they're not stopping. Right. Um, and so, what would and happen? I think the people calling out is just funny, because I think they're I, just I perpetuating it. They are, <laughs> because now I'm seeing that they've you know, brought in commented you know, on something I would have never seen in the first place. Right. Exactly. Uh, but I do think LinkedIn would benefit from a quality control in a, in, in a sense. Um, I, I look at LinkedIn as, as business. 
I don't want to see articles about, you know, that link to BuzzFeed or that link to Mashable necessarily, unless, well, Mashable is a bad choice. They have a lot of good information there. I, I just, I don't care about your kids. Sorry. You want to talk about your kids? Let's actually be friends and somewhere else. You know, LinkedIn is business. And I think the quality that's been shared and that's being written through LinkedIn Pulse is really sometimes questionable. Yes, that's unfortunate. When you, yes. when you talk about content marketing, Pulse is a great tool. Yes. It's, it's, it extends the opportunity for you to blog on a, on a platform that's going to get more traffic and more eyeballs. Mm. And um, you can really, you can build up good content, a nice content library on LinkedIn that helps support you, helps support you as a professional, helps help support the business. Right. Um, I've, I've definitely clicked through the headline to get to Pulse where it's an ad. They're, yes. they're just, it's a paragraph advertising themselves and then clicking to their website. Um, yep. it's, and you expect content. Yep. And, and, and so you, you expect to read something, not be sold to. Yep. And, and so that surprised me the few times that I clicked through and I just really felt that wasn't an appropriate way of using Pulse. But are there guidelines around using Pulse? Not really. And it's just like, unfortunately, everything else that the internet has to offer, <laughs> even if it was originally designed with one concept in mind, someone else comes along and says, oh, I can use it for, yeah. for X, Y, Z. Um, and I think even in mail, now you can actually purchase ads in in mail to be sent. I have been getting ads through in mail. And to me, InMail was a great tool to reach out to people that you weren't connected to. Right. You know, it cost you money. So, you know, you thought about it if you didn't have a subscription. But now or not, there are ways to get to people that you weren't connected no, to but I'm in other ways. Direct, you know, I want to InMail this person. So it will cost if I don't have a subscription, it will cost. But now there I've been getting this one person every two weeks sends me an ad. To, so you're you're on their quote unquote mailing list. Yes, but I've ne and it's strictly because we're connected. So oh no, we're not connected. We're in a group together. Well, that gives him the connection. Yeah, that's one way to get through to your mail is that you're in a group the but group together. To me, don't add. It just I don't know. I'm finding it very offensive. Maybe it's me. Um, but it's is the that, next level. Is that it's, content marketing? It's, is it? I don't yes. know. It's is email it? marketing. Okay. He's email just marketing. Different... Just using, yeah, he's using LinkedIn as the okay. email platform, right? It's just, I, I really think we need to start. You just didn't ask. You're getting spammed. <laughs> <laughs> That's what the problem is. Yeah. Yeah. I, and I'm having a problem with it. <laughs> so, so content marketing, you know, we talked about the different types of content having a plan for content, although we didn't really dive too too far into that. Um, and the who, what, when, how, and all that. Um, but there's definitely the wrong way yes. to do content marketing. Maybe that and should it's be not, next not, week. It's not just not hitting the right mark. You know, no, like the right. article. It's just the plan is, the strategy is, is just not above board I'll, I'll go with okay you know we um, talked this week we talked really about the the benefits and what is content marketing um and you're right there are right ways and wrong ways to do everything and i think the internet the ability the availability just gives us too much freedom sometimes on hey i'm going I, you know i've been getting an email every other day no, I'm sorry, every day, from a local chamber of commerce. Wow. At an event that's coming up using a platform that we're both very familiar with. I keep deleting it because they keep sending the same email. Yep. It's content. It's content marketing. It's content marketing. It's just not being done well. No. I got an email from a 
um, a marketer out west telling me about a mayor in his town that he was hosting. Do you think that's content I'm interested in? I, I okay, so now you're talking segmentation. Yeah, <laughs> but it's content marketing hitting the right people at the right time. He's hitting the wrong people. He's wasting with the his right time. message. With the right with message. With the right message. Too. Yes, he's not doing that, but yep. yes, I mean, yep. good content marketing does those things: right person, right time, right message. I right. think. And so, when you're looking to develop not just your plan, but where to find your content. If you are a digital marketer, as we come to the head of the hour, we would uh, invite you to take a look at b2brnd.com, where we have our research search engine, specifically how I'm clicking the actual window in here instead of the real one. Um, <laughs> I'm trying to play with the little one. Uh, so this is the first time we're, we're utilizing this function of Blab. And uh, as I was saying, for the digital marketers looking for content for your blog, blag, okay, blabs or blogs or a combination <laughs> of all of that, um, we know you, you're reading lots of emails because we're reading lots of emails also, but we're taking it a step further to take the information in that email, harness it in a database with summary content to give you just the top piece of news and allow you to click further to the original source if you wanna learn more. But one of the nice features about research our digital marketing search engine is that you can tag your posts. So you can group our content in ways in which makes sense to you. And then you can come to the top to find your list of tags, click any one of them and go back to the group of content that you've put together in order for you to do your research. So use our research for you to do your research. And we thank you for joining us today. We are always here on Friday at noon Eastern talking about digital marketing strategies. Today was content marketing. Next week, we have yet to pick a topic, but we invite everyone to come, ask questions, contribute to the conversation. I'm Ellen Williams, CEO and co-founder of B2B R&D and always shared, shared blab with. I'm Craig Yaris, the COO and co-founder of B2B R&D, home of research home of research. And when you want to find information, you search for it. But when you need to find information, you research. So thanks for joining us. And we will see everyone here next week at noon Eastern. Take care, everyone.